viewers, I am Dr. Sakshi Karkara. I am a pediatric gastroenterologist at Artemis Hospital. Today I just wanted to give you an insight about gastroparesis in children, how it is caused, what are the symptoms, how we can diagnose and what is the management protocol we are using at our place. So gastroparesis, contrary to what is usually felt, paresis actually means paralysis. But it is actually not paralysis, it is weakness of the stomach muscles and it is not only muscles which are involved, it has been shown that there is some issue with the sensations in the, of the stomach as well uh, in addition to the gastric uh, muscle weakness. So what happens, there is usually delayed emptying of the stomach contents into the intestine and that is what is causing all the symptoms what a child is usually going through. The common symptoms what we what a child usually comes to us are it is nausea, there is early satiety, there is bloating sensation, sometimes they vomit, there can be pain abdomen. So these are the common symptoms with which a child with gastroparesis usually presents to us. Now coming to the causes of gastroparesis in children, they are slightly different from what we see in adults. In adults, the commonest cause is diabetes, which is not that common in pediatric age group. And in pediatric age group, the commonest cause is usually secondary to infections. Post-infectious gastroparesis is something which we see most often in our OPD practice. We call it gastro, uh, it is secondary to any motility disorder of stomach only when we rule out other causes of uh, delayed gastric emptying like there is any, any, whether there is any mechanical obstruction or any biochemical disturbance or if there is any other infection in the body or any systemic illness. So we call it secondary to the primary motility problem of the stomach only when we rule out other causes. To investigate, uh, we usually uh, do a general biochemical work workup just to rule out any biochemical abnormality in the child. Sometime an upper GI endoscopy can also be done in a patient to rule out the other causes of uh, the, the symptoms like H. pylori gastritis or a duodenal ulcer or any inflammation in duodenum whether it is uh, celiac disease or duodenitis due to any other reason. Then you can go for a gastric emptying study in which a specific meal is given which is uh, along with the barium and then we measure the time it takes for the stomach to empty into the intestine and that helps us whether there is delayed gastric emptying or not. There are some specialized tests which are done by the nuclear medicine department which are called scintigraphy that can also be done to measure that and a very special test can be done to actually measure the enteral uh, motility and that is enterodiodinal manometry which is available only at very specialized center and we usually don't do it routinely it is limited for very specific patients who are really very sick and we are not sure what the diagnosis is coming to the treatment most of the time general dietary management helps these patients and our protocol is that we advise them, the parents to give their kids small frequent meals rather than one large meal because it is difficult for the stomach to empty large content and moreover the symptoms are going to exaggerate with a large meal. So small frequent meals are something which is always advised and the meal content has to be low in fat because fat delays gastric emptying. So we usually tell to avoid fatty food. then. Liquids are always better, so any any health drink, Pediasure or any other health drink can be advised to the child so that the child keeps on getting his nutrients adequately. In some sick patients, sometime and uh, we have to when the child is not able to tolerate anything orally, very rarely a gastrostomy or a jejunostomy can be done through which the feeds can be given, and rarely a TPN or a parenteral nutrition is given to sick patients. Now other uh, medications which can be tried is something to relieve the symptom, uh, symptoms of the patient like for nausea we can give a patient to relieve the acidity, the PPIs can be given then for gastric emptying we can add some medications which will increase the gastric emptying and then there are medications which will reduce the bloating like uh, which will reduce the gas content sometimes some specific type of antibiotics are also prescribed for that reason. Then there are there is we need to avoid too much of fiber 
in the diet for the patient because excess of fiber is going to increase the bloating for the patient. So these are the general measures. In addition, a cognitive behavioral therapy can be done and the factors which are actually causing the symptoms of gastroparesis should also be looked for and addressed at an adequate time to relieve the symptoms. Thank you very much.